Is it too late to learn to code? So I posted this the other day on Reddit. I said, so I'm a 25 year old non-technical founder who has decided to try and become technical. I just started to learn how to code a few months ago. Almost every time I bring this up with friends and even some other programmers, they're like, you're probably a little too late at this point. Do you genuinely think this is true? Do you think it's still worth my time to learn to code or is AI just going to get so good soon that any skills I develop will just be irrelevant a year from now? So this Loki kind of blew up <laughs> and I got a lot of engagement, a lot of really good responses that I kind of want to go through. But the reason I'm making this video, obviously this kind of triggered some people, this, this post, I wasn't genuinely asking this question as if some person on Reddit was going to dictate if I kept learning how to code or not. But I asked this question because genuinely I have heard this from a lot of friends. You're too late. And I was curious like what other people thought about this. Before I get into some of the best responses, I wanna give some background into how I got to this point as a 25 year old non-technical founder who is now learning to code. So first off, this is my brother Wyatt. He actually, he's in high school. He came and visited me a few months ago in Georgia and we had a really good time together. And he asked me this really deep question where he was like, hey, if you could go back to high school, what would you change? What would you do differently? And I thought about it for a while and eventually I came back to him and I was like, look, I don't like to be the person that has major regrets in life and is always doubting my past. But if I could go back, I would learn to code. I would start learning to code in high school. And the reason why is because your ability to build stuff and to be an entrepreneur, if you're technical, and when I say technical, I mean you can build your product without any help or outside assistance. That's the definition of a technical founder. You, beca you become so much more dangerous, so much more powerful if you're actually able to build your own product. And so I encourage anyone watching this video, if you're passionate about tech, learn to code or learn to build stuff. This could be another type of engineering. You could learn about robotics. It could be biology. It could be something like that. But some sort of science, something in STEM where you can actually build something, this is so valuable and it just became 10 times more valuable with AI because now AI can help you build things even faster. When you think about startups, there's kind of two main activities in startups. There's selling the product and there's building the product. So sales and marketing or engineering. And honestly, if people try to make it more complicated than this, then they're lying to you because literally it's just these two things. You have to be able to build something compelling and you have to be able to sell it. I grew up with this paradigm. All of my friends and family have always been in sales and marketing. I didn't have anyone in engineering around me. So I always just avoided it. I always just thought like it was too hard and I was never going to be able to do it. <laughs> and I eventually realized like, you know what? And a lot of people also told me focus on one or the other. They were like, just get really good at one or the other. But my opinion is if you want to be a startup founder, that is the best of startup founders then learn how to do both really well. They're not mutually exclusive. You can do both. And if you look at the top companies and the top founders in the world, usually the co-founders did both. And they usually started in one or the other, but they learned the other. And so how I came to terms with this, it took me way too long to realize this. So in 2020, I built my first tech startup called Happy Soul. It was an AI mental health app. It was really cool. I was one of three founders and I was the only non-technical founder. The other two were technical. And we ended up getting acquired by another startup after a year. It was really awesome and it went really well. I worked at this startup as the head of marketing for another two years until 2023. But throughout my time at Happy Soul and Galvin, there were always these opportunities where I was frustrated about my ability to either understand the product or want to make the product better. And I was like, I need to learn how to code. But for some reason, it was like this block in my brain. And it wasn't until recently, I, in 2023, I went back to school. I got my degree in business. And it wasn't until this year where I started on another startup where I was like, it's time. It's time for me to learn how to code. And this is even, so I have a technical co-founder. This wasn't out of desperation because I couldn't find a technical co-founder. It was more like, wow, I could 
two X my abilities as a founder. If I know how to code, I'll be able to market better. And I'll also be able to support my technical co-founder better. And I think it'll make us more powerful. And so it took me far too long, but I really believe that it is, like I said, up here, if you can do both of these, you're a unicorn. And that's what I'm trying to do. It's probably going to take me a while to really build up my engineering skills. But one thing my technical co-founder said to me the other day, if you're having doubts still, is so many people just never try because it looks hard, but it's easier than it looks. Coding is hard. <laughs> Honestly, I, I've been learning the last few months and I've never been so tired. It's like very taxing and very exhausting, but it's clicking. Like I'm starting to understand it and it's starting to work and it's been very satisfying. So yeah, anyways, that that's my whole background with learning how to code. And now if we get into the actual reasons of, because obviously I just laid out why you why I think you should learn how to code as a founder, but suddenly there's this new thing called AI that has made this question a little more interesting. Because as I said about in this, is it still worth to learn your time to code or is AI just going to get so good? Like in one year, is it gonna be irrelevant that anyone learned how to code and suddenly non-technical co-founders can just chat away and build whatever they want? No one knows the future, but if you have tried to build your own app today just with AI, you can build some cool stuff, but not really anything that will knock your socks off. I've tried, so like this was the other day, I was trying to, I honestly tried for hours with Claude and I use Cursor as well. Cursor is a is a code editor that like auto completes code. And I honestly, I gave it really good instructions. I went back and forth for like hours. It was like six hours to build like a pretty simple app that like displayed information and saved it and like did things like that. And I reached the point where I was like, at what point is it just worth it to learn how to code? So there is a bet here that you kind of have to take. Like if you do learn how to code, you're betting that it's still going to be a long time before AI 100% replaces programmers. And if you listen to the, like, if you listen to the smartest people in the world and some of the best programmers, people at Y Combinator and at all other places, all, most of them, the consensus is programmers, good programmers just got way more leverage become, because of AI and it's not replacing the good ones anytime soon. And the, some of the answers in Reddit reflect this. So first of all, I loved this answer. He thought I was genuinely asking Reddit, uh, like as if they were going to decide my fate with this, but this was great. If you're like telling yourself excuses, you're using it as an excuse because it's hard. In five years, you're going to ask yourself the same question. If you don't start now, like that's probably true. I was like, dang, I need to hear this. <laughs> you're never too late. Just keep building and shipping. You're, you'll learn along the way. Depends on your long-term goals. Should be able to build a basic website apps within two years. What's interesting is like there, there were a lot of answers like this, like these people that are extremely bullish on AI but every time you ask like a really good programmer about this, I've heard it enough from really smart people that I trust that I don't think this is just them in denial of AI actually replacing engineers. But honestly, I think AI is a little overrated right now from the camp that's like, you don't need to know how to code at all. Like you can build something today with AI that's amazing. I am yet to see like an unbelievable use case of this. And there's some really interesting things. I think one of the people, one of the people that has pushed it the furthest is actually, if you go on YouTube, there's this guy named Riley Brown. He has pushed like not knowing how to code super far. And it's honestly really awesome what he's doing. But if I'm being honest, like I haven't seen like a, someone build a killer company that can make a lot of money without knowing how to code yet. And I think it's still going to be a while for that. Um, there's a lot of other good answers in here. There couldn't be a better time to pick up this skill with all the AI helpers to get you up and running. This has definitely been true. So I've been learning the last three months and this is one thing I wanted to recommend in this video. So there's this, if you are look wanting to code, there's this thing called the Odin project, which I would highly recommend. It's open source, it's free. And they give you like the full breakdown of if you wanna learn web development. So building like web apps and apps and stuff. They have this full stack JavaScript course. I've been doing this the last few months and it's been amazing. So if you are looking to do this, I would recommend the Odin project. That's a side note. But one thing that's been really interesting with the Odin project, I've been using it with AI and like asking personalized questions as I go. And honestly, AI is an amazing teacher. So learning to code just became a lot easier too because of AI. This person said, this lady learned to code at 81 years old and built her own, her own app. No time like the present. If you watch this video, it's really good. Um, I learned when I was 34. Yeah. So 
you can, I'll, I'll link this below. It's a really interesting thread with a lot of interesting pers perspectives, but the overall takeaway is if you're interested in tech and you're passionate about it, I would learn to code. I've been doing it. I have a family. I'm married. I have a baby on a way and I'm building like a startup. I'm super busy, but I've been able to carve away five to 10 hours a week just by being disciplined. And I feel like I'm in a pretty good spot today. I haven't been able to do anything crazy yet. It's probably going to take me two years, honestly, to do anything dangerous. Um, I did build this. This was kind of fun. This little calculator that has confetti. This is the, this is guys, this is why you learn to code. So you can build stuff like this. <laughs> no, but honestly, it felt really good to be able to build something like this. But the, the point is, I honestly think it will pay off. And the, the last thing I want to nail home, if none of this has convinced you so far, is Paul Graham. So this is on Paul Graham's website. He is the person that created Y Combinator, which is one of the biggest startup accelerators in the world. It's the, the biggest, I should say. He wrote this really good essay earlier this year called How to Start Google. And he was talking to 14 and 15 year olds. And he was pretty much like, if you want to be a future founder, like what should you do? And honestly, this is what, because this is a similar time, March, 2024, where I decided I was going to learn to code. And he pretty much said, this is the part where I was like, I'm learning. He goes, actually, it's easy to get startup ideas once you're good at technology. Once you're good at some technology, when you look at the world, you see dotted outlines around the things that are missing. You start to be able to see both the things that are missing from the technology itself and all the broken things that could be fixed using it. And each one of these is a potential startup. This was one of the things that really convinced me because when you understand the technology or the science behind something so well, you see the problems that no one else sees. You see the solutions that no one else sees. And so I'm betting that it isn't too late to learn to code. And this video could age super terribly if like AI in like three months suddenly replaces all programmers, but I don't think that's gonna happen. And I hope that in a few years, I'll be able to make a follow-up video to this where I'm like, this was one of the best bets I've ever made. But anyways, I would love to know what you think. Do you think it's too late to learn to code? I would love to hear more about your journey as well if uh, whenever you started to learn to code or if you're kind of on the fence about it. So. Uh, yeah, let me know down in the comments and yeah, I look forward to chatting with y'all. Thanks.